Pippo Ghana goes BAM! Ethan Hayter is looking pretty fresh in that British National Champs kit, whilst Alaphilippe in better condition than his comments to the media suggested before Tour de la Provence. This is a prologue. You might be thinking, why are you covering a prologue? Ella, like, well, hashtag no days off. 7K prologue to open it up before the three road stages. This was near the ocean. Can get a little bit windy down here, but it's one for the short specialists. We have Tobias Ludvigsen here, but the heavy, heavy favourite was Ghana. Really, uh, the only challenge to him would be if Ethan Hayter was in insane form like he was in the World Championships, but even that would probably be pushing it. Ludvigsen, former Swedish ITT champ, came in third eventually, but let's focus on the GC contenders. Carapaz was here after crashing in Bessege, then finishing that, but not looking great on Mont Bouquet. He did a mediocre time trial. Not a disaster, but losing 26 seconds to Hayter or 21 seconds to Alaphilippe, it's a lot because the final stage is Montagne de Lure, which is not as steep as the Chalet Renard finish, but I've got clips of Jorgensen for a reason. Should Movistar ride for the young American now? Because Ivan Sosa, who I don't have footage of, did one of the worst prologue performances I have ever seen. Sosa lost a minute and four seconds in an eight-minute TT to Ghana, losing like 58 seconds to Hater. I don't know what went wrong. Like Carapaz had a bad-ish one. Sosa, I don't know, like, did he have little, two flat tyres? But something for Movistar to sort out, and he, I think he was supposed to be their GC contender here. For Quick Step, it looks like Alaphilippe, because Ilan van Wilder, who was a good time trial, he's a young guy, he's just transferred from DSM, he didn't do the greatest TT. Seven seconds behind Ethan Hayter, and three seconds behind Alaphilippe. But Alaphilippe had said he'd been sick coming into this stage, so... It'll be interesting to see again on Montagne de Lure how Quickstep will play those two guys together, which one they'll go for, whether Van Wilder will be the leader, and Movistar, as I said, what they're going to do with Jorgensen or Sosa for GC on that last stage. But the man who did a great TT by his standards was Nairo Quintana, only losing 19 seconds to Hater. And Arkea need the points, and Quintana says he's coming into good shape. That's a good TT by his standards. I can't wait to see what Nairo does in the mountaintop finish. Other decent rides were by Matthias Skelmose Jensen. He's a young Dane on Trek Segafredo. He did well on UAE Tour last year on Jebel Hafeet. He lost 7 seconds to Alaphilippe in this TT, 24 to Ghana and 12 to Hayter. So just a solid enough TT. If he does well on the last stage again, someone who can top three the overall of this race. But the best TT from any of the GC contenders, and you think, is Ethan Hayter a GC contender here? And if it had the Chalet Renard finish, if Sosa was here and Vlasov and the GC start list of last year, and by the way, COVID, there is carnage in the peloton right now with start list being amended late. It's it's rampant throughout the, the peloton. But for the start list we have here with the 6% 13K finish, on stage three and the hilly stage on stage two, and maybe Hater will go for the sprint tomorrow with Viviani. I think I want to see how Hater goes on a longer mountain top finish as a GC guy. He finished this stage 12 seconds after Ghana. I think he can go quicker than that. He said himself he's been a he's been unwell recently, but with Carapaz having crashed recently, not looking great, and that's a, a large amount of time Carapaz lost. I think Ineos should just see what Hayter can do on GC. Other decent performances were Pierre Latour, who just missed out on third at Passage behind Johannesson because he's got a black, not a red TT bike. Maybe they should fix that for upcoming TTs. But yeah, Alaphilippe overperformed, I think, for Quick Step. If you remember last year in Tour de la Provence, he was really good on the Chalet Renard stage and he kind of got one two by Ineos when they sent Sosa up the road and Bernal sat on Alaphilippe. He downplayed expectations a little bit coming into this, but... They have no sprinter here because Ballerini's out, so maybe he'll also be going for the sprint tomorrow. He'll definitely be on for stage two and then defending on stage three, one would think. But the man who took out this stage, and like you don't need to be a genius to have picked Pippo Ganna for this stage, given that there's no Wavanart, Kung, or, or Bissiger, or riders like that on the start line. There weren't too many turns. 7K flat prologue TT. And he did the business to make it two from two from the year. Now, if you want to get immediate updates or recaps after the race, I've just launched the lanternrouge.com.au website. We have recaps of every single dot pro or world tour race we have previews as well as well as watts per kilo or feature articles analyzing climbing data it's a soft launch 
except it's not because I just told you about it. So go and check it out, link in the description down below. But Ghana cleaned up this TT 12 seconds ahead of Hayter with an average speed of 52.8 kilometers an hour. So not his quickest TT, he did one that was like 58 kilometers an hour, or 57 kilometers an hour last year, which is outrageous. Look for him and Ineos to try something tomorrow on the sprint stage if it's a little bit windy. But before we get to results, a big shout out to the new Nice Metropole team and also to your boy, Antoine Berlin. Really, really nice guy. He actually worked in the ASO rights team and is now a full-time professional cyclist with Nice Metropole. So congrats to Antoine. Actually, a big chance for top 10 on the mountaintop finish. He did well in Savoy Mont Blanc last year. But Ghana takes it out as expected. It's supposed to be a sprint stage tomorrow, but wind is predicted. I expect Ineos to try. Put Quintana and Movistar under pressure. They got Ghana, Hater, and Co. But thanks for watching as always. Go and check out the website which has immediately after the stage the GC gaps, not just the stage result gaps. I'll see you with the Oman video later tonight.